What's going on everybody? Welcome to 2024 and the first video of it for me, at least for this channel. Wanted to do a video today kind of talking through my favorite infill options for 3D printing and the different scenarios on why I would use one over the other. So let's go ahead and get into it. So just for demonstration purposes, I have a handle here blown up in size. This is like something you'd use on like a, just a pull handle. This one's specifically made for paracord, but as you can see, it's up to 320%, so it's not actually this big, but this will give you an idea of what the different infills look like. So off the bat, if I were to slice this plate, just the default settings, we're going to have what's known as a grid infill. Uh, it's funny that this is the default to me, considering how bad <laughs> grid infill can be. Uh, I guess the good way to put it is basically it's laying lines uh, as a matter of fact, you can see here the way that the way it moves. So you can see the nozzle is going to move and it's essentially just drawing lines in like a checkerboard pattern. But the problem is, is whenever these lines are moving at a specific like faster speed, you can see these little areas here uh, where they intersect. They tend to bunch up, which causes the uh, nozzle to scrape over time on top of the infill, which can lead to bed adhesion issues. It can uh, affect the print quality, just a ton of different things. So it's it blows my mind that this is considered the default infill pattern, but it is. I'm hoping that changes in the future, but let's go over the ones I use. Of course, if you wanna change the infill pattern, it's pretty simple. The only thing you need to go down to is strength over here on the side and then scroll down to where it says sparse infill. So the different types of infill patterns, there's a ton of them, though I only use a few. My number one go to is 100 percent gyroid. Gyroid is actually the fan favorite for all your Prusa fans out there. You can see it has just an overall like very interesting pattern. Uh, not only does it look cool if you decide to print it without any top layers, but one nice thing about this too is the layers never cross each other. So you can see here it's printing uh, line after line after line. And then, you know, you go down a few lines and you can see it's doing line after line after line in a different direction and it's constantly moving. So it almost gives this uh, kind of like wavy effect, I guess is a good way to put it. But Overall, I feel like the parts that I make with grid infill are very strong and I never have any issues with nozzle scraping because it's never crossing over another path. Let me show you what it looks like when you print it. So this that I'm about to show you, this is a failed print. It was not failed. It did not fail because the infill at all is for a completely different reason. Nozzle clog. Um, but you can see here, this is a gyroid infill. It takes just slightly longer than some of the other infills to print, but to be honest with you, I think it's a good trade-off. So grid infill, I use it for structural pieces. I use it for anything that requires a ton of infill um, and anything that I want to skimp out on infill, but still have very good structure, the, the gyroid seems to do it. Like I can go as low as like five to 8%. And you know, the walls at like two and it's still a very structurally sound print. Another one I tend to use is honeycomb here. Honeycomb is really cool if you're just looking for that like 3D printed look, it just looks like bee honeycomb. Um, you, it prints in a very interesting way. So you can see here, it, it actually just draws it line by line. So it doesn't overlap per se. It also lays down in different layers in different directions. As you can see, like this is the next layer up it's doing it in a di di diagonal uh, pattern. Honeycomb's good. Let me get you an example of that one. So this is a honeycomb pattern. This was printed, this is just like a little coaster. It was just printed without a top layer, which shows that uh, that grid, excuse me, the uh, honeycomb infill here. Very structurally sound as well. Very good option. Um, let's say we were to compare the two, 15% infill on both. This part would print in four hours with honeycomb. And if we print in gyroid, 
three hours and 12 minutes. So as you can see, honeycomb takes a little longer, but it does have a nice pattern. So if you're looking for something that kind of shows the inside, honeycomb is a good option. So let's say you wanna print something fast, super quick. Infill is not really something you need to worry about. You're more so worried about getting just a functional part out to prototype with, right? Um, a good option for that, there's two that I use. Well, three technically. There, there is Cubic, which is an option. This one that's still, it's very similar to Grid, as you can see, but you can see the way that it actually lays it down. It doesn't cross quite as much. So this is a good option. You can see it prints in two hours and 46 minutes. So that's even lower. And I didn't check with the Grid, two hours and 48 minutes. So Grid and the Cubic are pretty similar. But let's say, you wanted to use Cubic, but you want it to print a little faster. There's this really cool thing called Support Cubic. And this is interesting. The way Support Cubic works is it takes the triangles. And so you can see at the bottom layer here, there's only like a few triangles. But the farther it moves up and the more it's going to need to support something, the more intricate those uh, are going to be. So you can see on the side here, those triangles are actually becoming more prevalent. And of course, the closer we get to the top, the more it's going to show. So that that is a little interesting in the fact that like, so the top of this print is going to be a lot more sturdy than the, the bottom would be. So if you pressed really hard on the top of this handle, the top meaning the underside of where this is actually displayed, it may not be as structurally sound as the very top here. So that's something to think about, but it's great for prototyping or, uh, parts that are going to sit on a shelf for like uh, uh, statues or anything like that, they're a good option. It's also a good way to save on filament too. And that's something to think about when you're when you're printing, when you're choosing an infill, uh, is the amount of filament that it's going to use also should dictate which one of these that you use. So yeah, hopefully this helps you guys out and it gives you a little bit of better understanding of what I use for infill and gives you an overall idea of the different types of infill available. I'm not perfect, I'm learning this as I go, but I figured I'd share what little information I know and hopefully it helps you out.